Hi friends, I'm here with a yoga offering. As always, please go at your own pace. Rest whenever you need to. Feel free to skip things or change things if they're not working for you today. Let's begin on our backs. You can come into a symmetrical, relaxed position. Go ahead and spread out. Make whatever adjustments you need to so that you're comfortable. And either close your eyes or take a soft gaze. Start to slow down your breath. You can let your eyes open, keeping a soft focus. And feel free to open and close your eyes as it's useful for you. Let's begin by sliding arms overhead, and stretching out long through your arms and legs. Interlace your fingers, press out through your palms, flex your feet, reaching through the heels of your hands, the heels of your feet. And then release and bring the right knee to your chest. Give that knee a good squeeze in. And then straighten the right leg up towards the ceiling. Flex and point your foot a few times. Circle your ankle a couple times, both directions. Bend your knee in, open your knee out to the right, and then straighten partway or all the way out to the side, grounding down through the back of the left leg. Let's release, bend the knee, bring it across for a spinal twist. And then staying in your twist, straighten the right leg on a low diagonal, right arm on a high diagonal, reaching fingers and toes away from one another. And then roll back onto your back. Bring both knees in, take a little circle or rock, massaging the lower back and sacrum into the floor. And then grab hold of just the left knee. Drop the right leg long. Squeeze this knee in close. <sighs> Straighten the left leg up. Flex and point your foot a few times. Circle your ankle a couple times one way, a couple times the other way. Bend your knee in, open it out to the left, and then straighten part way or all the way out to the side, grounding down through the back of your right leg. Release, bend your knee, bring it across. Spinal twist. First with a bent knee. And then straighten the left leg on a low diagonal, left arm on a high diagonal. And then roll back onto your back, bring both knees in, little circle or rock, evening out your torso. And then drop your feet to the floor and we'll get set up for a little bit of core work. Start by drawing the belly in, pressing the lower back down from the inside. We'll interlace fingers behind the head. Exhale, lift, head and chest up. Inhale, release down. Exhale up. Inhale down. Up and down. Up 
and down. Up and down. Let's take one more like this. And then release down. Bring your right knee in and your left elbow across. And then extend the right leg really long. Knee in. Reach long. Knee in. Reach long. Knee in. Reach long. One more. And then switch. Left knee in, right elbow across, and then stretch it out. Knee in. Reach long. Knee in. Reach long. In. And reach. One more. And now bring both legs up. We're going to outwardly rotate the legs. Bring one leg in front of the other and then quickly switch as you slowly lower your legs towards the floor. When it gets difficult to keep the lower back on the floor, head back up. Quick little switches, slow lower and lifts. Can you relax your face, your shoulders? One more. And then release, bring your knees in. Another little circle, a rock. And then if it feels okay to do so, take a couple rock and rolls on the length of the spine. So you can rock your knees to your chest, roll up to sitting. If this does not work for you, don't do it. If you are doing the rock and rolls, you might use the momentum to bring your hands to the floor and get a little hover through the hips, maybe even through the feet. And then use that momentum to step or hop your feet back. Come into a high push-up position. Shift your weight forward to lower down. And then come into your back bend. And that could be cobra or up dog, as low or high as feels right for you. And then back to down dog, hips high. Take your time opening up into this down dog. You might pedal out your feet a little bit or shift your hips side to side. And then drop your knees, sink back to child's pose, releasing hips to the heels, forehead to the floor. With arms out in front of you, walk your hands over to the left. And then pull back through your right hip, stretching right side a little more. Come through center and over to the other side. Pull back through your left hip, stretching left side a bit more. And then back to center. Lift up through table, come back through down dog, and then walk your hands and feet towards one another. Let's hang in ragdoll, feet hip width apart, parallel. You can bend your knees a little or a lot. You might take a sway or shake out here. Hmm. Bend your knees a little more and slowly roll up. Coming all the way up to standing. Step up to the front of the mat. Coming into Mountain Pose, Tadasana. We'll take a full A-Series Sun Salutation. Next inhale, arms sweep high. Exhale, fold forward, swan dive down. Inhale, lengthen. Step or hop your feet back, lower down. Up dog or cobra. 
And back to down dog. Let's take five deep breaths. Could be in down dog, but you could also come back to child's pose or sitting or onto your forearms, any neutral shape. Each rest, choose a shape that feels like a rest for you. Last breath here. Come back through down dog and step or hop your feet forward, inhaling flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, up to standing. Exhale, arms press down. Again, inhale, arms high. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen, step or hop your feet back, lower down, up dog or cobra, and back to down dog. This time from down dog, take your right leg up, bend your knee in and start circling this bent right knee, making the biggest circle possible for your hip joint. Next time your leg is up, reach it straight. And then bring your right knee towards right upper arm. Extend it up and back. Take it across towards left upper arm. Reach it up and back. Now right towards the center of the chest. Extend it up and back. A big step forward. High lunge. Inhale, arms up. Settle in, sink low. Feeling this shape where you are right now. One more breath. Tip forward, standing splits. Hands to the floor or two blocks. We'll do this with hips square and with the upper body letting go like ragdoll. Last breath here. Step back. Warrior one. Arms up. Settle in. Sink low. One more breath here. Release, make your way to down dog. From down dog, left leg sweeps up. Bend your knee in and start circling. Next time your leg is up, reach it straight. And then bring your left knee towards left upper arm. Send it up and back. Take it across towards right upper arm. Reach it up and back. And right towards the center of the chest. Extend it up and back. Big step forward, high lunge. Arms up. Sink low. Last breath. Tip forward. Standing splits. Modify or adjust however you need to. Working with your body. 100% effort. But letting it be like it is. Last breath here. Step back. Warrior one.
One more breath. Release. Make your way to down dog. And then five deep breaths in down dog or child's pose or sitting, any neutral shape. Last deep breath in and out. Come back through down dog and step or hop your feet forward, inhaling flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, up to standing. Exhale, arms press down. Bend the knees and come into chair, Utkatasana. Hips low, head high, shoulders low, fingers high. One more breath. Release, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen. Step or hop your feet back, lower down. Up dog or cobra. And back to down dog. Right leg sweeps up. Step forward, high lunge. Arms up. Open out, warrior two. Flip the right palm to face the ceiling, reverse warrior. Straighten the front leg, triangle. Last breath here. Release. Make your way to down dog. Left leg sweeps up. Step forward, high lunge. Arms up. Open out. Warrior two. And then take your time adjusting, feeling where you are. Flip the left palm, reverse warrior. Straighten the front leg, triangle. One more breath. This time to release, bring both hands to the floor, turn to face the wide side of the mat, and hang in a wide-legged forward fold as a resting pose. You might separate your feet more or less, bend the knees a little or a lot, use props for your hands, whatever you need to do so this feels restful. Keeping your legs more or less how they are now, walk both hands over to the right. You might take hold of the right foot or just go in that direction, feeling what's being stretched over here. Come over to the left. You might take hold of your right uh, left foot or just go in that direction. And walk your hands over to the right. We'll bend the right knee a little or a lot. And then come over to the other side, bending that knee a little or a lot. And you can go back and forth several times. So you're welcome to keep both feet flat. You could let one of the heels or toes come off the floor so you lower your hips. You can explore or experiment. 
Just seeing how your body moves, what's interesting. Going back and forth. And then back to neutral. Let's turn the heels out a little bit, bend the knees, and come up to a horse stance. So feel free to separate your feet more or less so the knees are right above the ankles, knees and feet pointing same direction. And then bring backs of the hands together, arms up to shoulder height, and release down. We'll do that a few times with breath. Now same movement with just the right arm as you lean to the right, and then lean to the left. And we're going to take this side to side movement into some dynamic balancing. So we're going to hop off the back foot and come towards the front foot. And then fall onto it, shift your weight, and then go the other way. We'll do this several times. Now if you want to make this a little bit easier, it can be a short stance. So you can just make it a small distance and then it's just a small shift of weight. For a little bit more adventure, it could be a big fall and a big leap up. If the arms feel awkward, you can do something else or just do them a few more times until they feel less awkward. Playing with that moment of suspend before you fall before you catch yourself. And then we'll take this into a couple of static balances. So next time you're towards the front of your mat, bring your right foot to your left knee and come into a figure four position. Hips sink low, arms can be out to steady you, at your front leg, prayer position, or even fingertips to the floor or a block. You want to take this into an arm balance instead or attempt that, you can try Galavasana by placing the hands flat, shoulder width apart, ankle and knee hook to the upper arms, shift your weight forward, possibly lifting the back foot, maybe extending it straight. If you were in your hands, come back to your foot. Let's rise, fall. Glide across, same thing other side. Figure four balance. So you stop anywhere along the way, this might be plenty. If you took a different variation on the first side, including the arm balance, you might try that again. More important than what you, where you get, see if you can pay attention the whole time, breath steady the whole time, even as you might be shifting your weight forward even as you might be lifting that back leg or trying to. If you were in your hands, come back to your foot. Let's rise, fall, glide across. Same leg position, right ankle above the left knee. Sink the hips, this time we'll take a twist. Outside of the right hand to the inside of the right foot. Roll open through the top shoulder. You can stay here or shimmy your arm further down so maybe you get your fingertips to the floor. Just be where you are. There's an arm balance option if you like. Twisted Galavasana. Hands to the floor, shift your weight over, possibly lifting that back foot up. If you were in your hands, come back to your foot, rise. Fall, glide across. Same thing, other side. And I have a whole tutorial on these arm balances if you're interested in them, but this is a little challenging for you. You can search YouTube, Galavasana tutorial. So being where you're at, you don't need to get any further than you get. So it might be the outside of the hand, might be the outside of the elbow. You might take both hands to the floor, shifting weight. Maybe that back foot comes off the floor, maybe it doesn't. Are you breathing? If you were in your hands, come back to your foot. Let's rise, fall, glide across. 
Now catch same hand to foot in the back. We're going to circle the right knee, big circle. Just one or two in each direction. And then static quad stretch. You can stay upright, opposite hand out or at your foot, or you could fold, leaning into the supporting leg, a block or the floor. If you did fold, make your way back up. Let's release, fall, glide across. Same thing other side. Same hand to foot and back. Start circling. And so all this movement in our balance practice is really challenging those core stabilizing muscles. So all the wobbling that might be happening in your supporting leg, that's like strength training for these muscles that keep you in balance. Coming to a static pose now, upright or folding. Can the back of your neck be long, whether you're upright or folding? If you did fold, make your way back up. Let's release and fall. Glide across. Opposite hand catches foot in the back this time. Twisted king dancer. Kick your foot into your hand. Lifting the chest, fingers, toes, head, everything going up. Gently release, fall, glide across. Same thing other side, opposite hand catches foot in the back. Kick your foot into your hand. Gently release, fall, glide across. Now bring your knee to the front. We'll set up for a twist. Opposite hand to the outside of the knee or the outside of the foot. Roll open through the right shoulder. Maybe even looking back. And whether you're holding your knee or your foot, your leg could be partly straight. So if you're holding your knee and you want a little more, you might kick through your heel. If you're holding the foot and it's too much, bend your knee. Last breath here. Gaze forward, release, and fall. Glide across. Same thing, other side. Knee to the front, get steady. And then set up for your twist. Opposite hand to the outside of the knee or the outside of the foot. Open out through the left arm, maybe even looking back. Last breath here. Gaze forward, release, and fall. Glide across. Now we're going to take a step behind. Opposite elbow to the outside of the knee. Work the palms towards the center of the chest. And then try and straighten the legs, feet towards flat, opening through the top shoulder. Kind of like a free form revolve triangle. Now you can stay here, or if you bend both knees, you might bring hands to the floor and get set up for scissors pose. Kundanyasana, possibly taking one or both feet off the floor, possibly extending one or both legs. If you are in your hands, come back to your feet. Let's rise, step out, step behind. Same thing, other side. Opposite elbow to the outside of the knee. Working palms towards the center of the chest, opening that top shoulder, going towards legs straight, towards feet flat. Either stay here 
or if you tried the arm balance on the other side, try it again. There's nowhere to get except where you get. But as you attempt things that are challenging for yourself, you can practice having wherewithal, peace, ease in this situation, whatever situation you're in right now. If you were in your hands, come back to your feet, rise, step out, and then fold. Let's take this fold as a rest, so take it in the way that feels good for you. Any arm position, any movement. If you want to take this into a straddle split, you can separate your feet. And you're just finding your edge. If you go to separate your feet and they don't go any further, it means you've arrived, you're there, and it doesn't need to look like what I'm doing. You might be on your hands. If you come low enough that it makes more sense to support yourself on your elbows, you can come to your elbows. So heel the feet back in. And let's lower down onto the knees for frog pose. So you may want to pad your knees by rolling up the sides of the mat for a little support under the knees or ankles. You can also throw a blanket or cushion under there. So for frog, you want your knees in line with the hips and feet in line with the knees, so right angles. And your hips may be high or low. We're going towards the floor, but your body will tell you when to stop. Please listen. If this does not work for you, you can do the same thing on your back. Just lie on your back, open your legs, and then gravity is helping to open the legs without the pressure on the joints. So you might shift your hips forward and back, looking for the sweet spot. You may be able to avoid the stretch, but that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to get right in there. So is it tighter for you with your hips a little forward or back? Pelvis tilted one way or another. And then we're going to point the toes and bring the toes in towards one another and sit between the heels. Your hips may or may not come to the floor. For some bodies, this is a very comfortable position. Some kids sit like this. For me, it's pretty tight. It might be tight for you as well. And just kind of lean the hips back, kind of like a very wide-legged child's pose. And have your upper body be as relaxed as you can. And then let's bring the knees all the way together. And while you do, you can turn to face the front of your mat. Sink the hips back. Releasing. Let's rise up to a kneeling position and get set up for camel ustrasana. If you want to pad your knees, you can grab a blanket and again roll up your mat a little bit. Try and have pelvis neutral. Notice if the hips start to tip back and if so, drop the tail. You can bring your hands to the buttocks, roll your shoulders back, your elbows back, lift the chest. And either stay here or reach the hands back for the heels. If the heels are a little bit too far, tucking your toes will give you another couple of inches. If it's still too far, you can use blocks or keep your hands on your buttocks. Wherever you are, you can choose your head position, looking forward, up, or dropping it back. Mm. 
Keep dropping the tail, lifting the heart. And then release, come up, take a seat, a neutral spine. And either stay resting here or take one more if you like. So it could be same thing again or a different variation, something more gentle, something deeper. It's up to you. Feel what you are doing. Whenever the pose feels complete, come down. Let's take child's pose. our way to sitting. If you want to take a vinyasa on your way, you're welcome. Or you can just sit. Extend legs out in front of you. We'll take a seated forward fold. You're welcome to sit up on something. You're welcome to grab your feet or use a strap around your feet or keep hands on the floor. We're going towards a flat back, towards folding, looking for your edge. Where is it right now? And if it changes, adjusting with it, going deeper or backing out. Inhale to look up, exhale, release. Let's bring the right leg in. We can take hold of the lower leg and kind of rock it side to side. Try and stay right up on your sit bones. So notice if you're rounding and as much as you're able, come up. And then we'll bring the right foot to half lotus if that's a pose that works for you. If that does not work for you, don't do it. You could do Janashirshasana instead. So the foot to the inner thigh. If you want to try a bind here, right arm can come behind the back, either for the inner elbow or for the big toe, and you might fold. And folding could be just the idea of it, and then you meet your edge and breathe there, or maybe there's deeper to go. Inhale to look up. Exhale, release. Let's unwind. Maybe circle the ankles. Maybe give a little rub. Do what you need to do to feel complete on that side. And then we'll go to the other side. You can grab the left shin. Take a little rock. Sitting upright, tall spine. And then bring the ankle to the top of the thigh if you're doing half lotus. Otherwise, sole the foot to the inner thigh for Janashashasana. Maybe a bind. Maybe folding. So in each pose, we're customizing it, taking the directions of the pose and then working with our own unique bodies, how it is right now, so that we explore all of our edges. And then the real work, what I'm working on, is wherewithal at the edges. There's certainly a zone that I'm already comfortable in, my comfort zone, but outside of that, ooh, Sometimes hard to breathe deeply, relax, and open. So each of these shapes is an opportunity to practice 
choosing instead of contracting, tightening, closing, can I feel what's here and open to it? And that doesn't mean I'm going beyond my edges. I'm just going right up to them carefully, lovingly. Let's release. Unwind, maybe a few ankle circles, a little rub to the joints. If you want to take a vinyasa, you are welcome to. If you're ready, just roll onto your back. Go ahead and do that. Bring your knees in and take a little circle or rock and just check in with your body. What do you need? Is there any last pose or stretch that would help you feel complete in your practice? If so, take some time for that now. Is there a part of your body that could use some attention? The more time we spend getting in there and feeling, the better we get at taking care of ourselves and we're all learning how to do that. It's trial and error. If you're still enjoying your active practice, keep going. There's no rush. You can even go beyond when I end this video. If you've got energy for it and time, go for it. If you are ready to come into your final resting pose, you can do so now or as soon as you're done. Getting as comfortable as you can. Letting go of the control of your breath. Letting go of trying to do anything. Slowly begin to wiggle your fingers and toes. Gently waking your body up again. Let this movement increase gradually. Eventually stretching out long through your arms and legs. When you're ready, bring your knees in. Roll to one side. Use your hands to help you up to sitting. You come into a comfortable cross leg position. <sighs> hands together at the heart. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. That was a fun one.
Hope you took good care of yourself. Hope you keep taking good care of yourself. See you soon.